So uh, way back when I was working on my first book, Code Complete, I had been doing background research and writing sample chapters and so on for about two years before I was ready to submit uh, my manuscript to the publisher. And since I'd never published anything before, I thought I ought to submit a really detailed project plan just to convince the publisher that I was capable of finishing the book. Uh, so as I was getting ready to submit the proposal for the very first time, I sat down and I came up with a, an estimate. I used a decomposition approach. I went through section by section. I had a very detailed outline. I went through section by section. I estimated the page count in each section. And I had written enough by that point that I felt like I had some ability to kind of guess what the, uh, the count would be within each section. So I did that. And to my surprise, I came up with an estimate of 794 pages. And this was significantly out of alignment with my expectation, right? Same exact thing we see in software projects where the original business case is on the basis of 250 pages. The reality looks more like 800 pages. And so this was so far, so far different from my expectations that I just didn't believe it. I said, there's got to be some flaw with my estimating approach, right? And this is classic, right? Uh, the first time I get some real data, I throw out the data, and I think my gut's got to be right. Has that ever happened to any of you in a software context? Uh, so in other words, we have a pretty good hint after iteration number one that this is not a three-iteration project. It's more like a six-iteration project. Uh, and as I mentioned yesterday, if our iterations are shorter, let's say we're doing uh, bi-weekly iterations instead of monthly iterations, then we could have that indication after two weeks instead of after a month. And as I also mentioned yesterday, uh, a few of our clients have found that they get quite uh, stable data after two iterations once the team is intact and spun up on the agile process they're using and so on. So you know, if this really were done in bi-weekly iterations, even on a three-month project, we could have high confidence after two weeks that the project was going to take much longer than we had originally planned. Uh, some advantages of story points. Uh, they can't be misinterpreted as duration uh, because it's essentially a unitless measure. Um, they're not affected by pressure to bias the estimates because they're calibrated solely on the basis of project data. Uh, and uh, because they use project data, they become quite accurate over time. And if you uh, follow the technique, uh, with uh, any kind of discipline, you almost can't help but migrate toward an accurate estimate as you go through uh, further iterations. In theory, I worry about that because in theory, once the team knows what a story point is worth, uh, now the story point assignments could possibly be subject to that bias and pressure and wishful thinking. Uh, so that you know, people might be thinking in their back of the mind, you know, if I give this five story points instead of eight, that means this is going to take somebody, you know four days instead of seven days or something like that. Um, so in theory, I worry about that. But in practice, we haven't seen that be an issue. In practice, it seems like teams that we've worked with anyway have been able to keep those story point assignments relatively pure even after the point value has essentially been calibrated and, and even after you'd kind of think they might uh, be subject to a little bit of bias that doesn't seem to work that way. We then uh, go through a process where we discuss uh, feature by feature. We go down the list. We discuss the feature being estimated. And then each individual uh, privately chooses a card for their estimate. So I might look at my cards, and I might say, uh, I think it's going to be a 5. And then everyone shows their cards at the same time. If everyone plays the same card, let's say everyone plays a 5, then we're done. Uh, we have just estimated that feature as being 5 story points. Uh, if there's some variation, let's say that I play a 5, uh, you, you play a 3 and somebody else plays an 8, and then we talk about it. And we talk about, well, why do you think it's a 3? Why do I think it's a 5? Why does this other person think it's an 8? Uh, and uh, we proceed until we think that we've kind of discussed as much as we need to, and then we show our cards again. And this process continues until everyone agrees that they can accept, that they're willing to accept uh, the middle value or the median value. So. It turns out that in this case, the actual total population is 33,100. And um, what that implies is that since we've got, let's see, 28, 33, 35 story points, 190 divided by 35 gives us the ratio of the whole project to this first iteration. So if we take that ratio and apply it by the actual, that gives us an estimate from, for the total of 100. 180 million, okay? Does that make sense? 
basically the total actual would just be um, the iteration actual times the total points divided by the iteration point. So that's the formula. And like I said, I'm happy to share all these spreadsheets so you can kind of look at the details at, at your leisure. You negative 20 or whatever cities have a population of 180 million is what you're predicting at this point? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so what we're saying is that if our iteration points are 35 and our total points are 190 and our iteration actual is 33.1 million and we've got to solve for the total actual, then, um, then x is going to equal 33 Point one million times 190 all divided by 35. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay. 